big companies often have to deal with legal issues in court. Nintendo, on the other hand, is no stranger to such situations. Because of the company's size and reputation, they have amassed many interesting cases throughout the years. Everything from Donkey Kong and Universal Studios' famous court case, to a nine-year-old boy who sued Nintendo because he was upset. The Battle of Kong The first case might be the oldest one that Nintendo has ever dealt with. The case centered primarily on Nintendo's arcade game Donkey Kong, which came out for the first time in 1981. Universal Studios, who made the 1933 movie King Kong, said that the game breaks the copyright of the movie. Universal Studios said that the protagonist of the game, Donkey Kong, looked too much like King Kong from the movie. They also said that the story of the game, in which a gorilla kidnaps a woman and is chased by a man, was similar to the story of the movie. Universal Studios demanded reimbursement and a court order to stop selling the game so that Nintendo couldn't distribute it. Nintendo said that the game was a parody, therefore it was protected by fair use. They said that even though the game's gorilla character looked a lot like King Kong, it wasn't meant to be a copy because it had its own identity. They said that the plot of the game was nothing like the plot of the movie and that it was an entirely new story. After doing some research, John Kirby, a lawyer for Nintendo, found out that Universal Studios didn't have exclusive rights to King Kong. Even worse for Universal Studios, it looks like they knew about it. The judge ruled in favor of Nintendo and said that even if Universal Studios owned exclusive rights, he would still rule in favor of Nintendo. The judge said that the game was a parody and was therefore protected by fair use. He also said that using the characters and the plot in the game did not violate anyone's copyright. People thought this decision was a big win for the video game industry because it showed that video games could be seen as a form of expressive speech that is protected under the First Amendment. The trial occurred in 1981 and Universal Studios tried to change the ruling with the appeals in 1984 and 1986. However, they were turned down each time. This big win empowered Nintendo, which was still a small company at the time, to develop into the huge corporate video game giant that we know today. Mario Party 1 and the $80,000 Settlement Mario Party 1 was a very popular game back in the day. For those who haven't played Mario Party before, I mean, how is that even possible? It was a board style gameplay in which players move around the board, collect coins and stars, and participate in various mini games. The goal of the game is to collect the most stars before the number of turns has run out. Because the game allows for up to four players at once, things have the potential to get out of hand quickly. When the first Mario Party game for the Nintendo 64 came out in 1999, the series really got started. But it wasn't all harmless fun in the beginning. Some minigames required you to move and spin the analog stick at rapid speeds in order to win. The analog stick's awkward design didn't help the situation, and some players got blisters, friction burns, and cuts from turning it faster and faster. Even though no cases were made, the New York Attorney General's office received more than 90 customer complaints. Nintendo agreed to a settlement that included paying $75,000 in legal fees and providing the players with gloves. At the time, an estimated 1.2 million gloves may have cost Nintendo up to $80 million. Nintendo didn't re-release Mario Party on the virtual console for Wii and Wii U because of all the complaints. Last year, Nintendo released Mario Party Superstars, and they sure do remember all those complaints. To avoid Nintendo from having to buy gloves for everyone, Nintendo added a new warning to the game. It's a me, Mario. The nine-year-old who fought Goliath. Clark Teeman was a nine-year-old boy who absolutely loved baseball. He was watching TV one day when he saw an ad for a video game that said you could be a baseball manager and play with all the teams. He used the money that he had been saving from collecting cans and bottles to buy the game. When Team had finally got the game, he quickly became very upset. The game we're talking about is Major League Baseball. It came out in 1988 and was one of the first games to have an official license from the baseball organization. But when he started the game, there were no player names. The game's only features seemed to be ratings and numbers. Not only that, but the roster was also out of date. Demon upset that he didn't get the game he thought he would, went to Child World to return it. Unfortunately, because the game was already open and there were no flaws, they would not refund it. 
Clark's father, Nick Tiemann, took Tiemann's complaint to Nintendo but was turned down. A lawyer named Lawrence Kanaga took on this case and took it to court. In the lawsuit, it was said that the game didn't have enough information to simulate being a manager of a team, while it's said on the package that you can. The lawsuit tried to get Major League Baseball, Nintendo, and LJN to either stop selling the game or change the box to better describe what it is about. Also, it asked for attorney fees, punitive damages, and $40, which was the original price of the title. Nintendo asked for the case to be dropped. When the game was made two years ago, LJN said that the rosters were accurate. It also stated that the package never said that the names of the players were included. On the other hand, the package said, each of the 26 major league teams is represented with its own full roster, highlighting individual stats and playing rosters as ways to tell them apart. After hearing both sides' arguments, the judge sided with Nintendo, and the case was dropped in 1990. Tiemann filed an appeal, but in 1991, the case was denied. Do you think Tiemann should have lost the case? Nevertheless, a strong case for a 9-year-old. Aren't these cases so fascinating? If you agree, then don't forget to hit that like button. Now back to the video. Thrice Game Vice In 2017, Nintendo was sued for patent infringement by a company called Game Vice, which specializes in making controllers for mobile devices. Game Vice says that Nintendo Switch's detachable Joy-Con controllers violate their patents for a combination computing device and a game controller with a flexible bridge section. Game Vice sent in a total of three lawsuits, the first one in 2017, the second one in 2018, and the third and final lawsuit in 2020. If persistence were a business, Game Vice would be it. According to Game Vice's patent, a tablet or smartphone was paired with detachable controllers on either side of the device, which the company said was comparable to the Joy-Con controllers on the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo, on the other hand, said that the Joy-Con controllers are not functionally or aesthetically similar to Game Vice's. Nintendo also said that the Switch does not break Game Vice's patents because it is a dedicated gaming console and not a combination computing device, like a tablet or a smartphone. According to Nintendo, the Game Vice and Switch controllers do not operate or look the same at all. In 2018, a district court judge sided with Nintendo and said that the Switch did not violate Game Vice's patents. Also, the judge denied Game Vice's request that the Switch not be sold in the US. In 2019, Game Vice appealed the decision, but the court appeals also sided with Nintendo. Try it one more time, gentlemen, because you never know when all that hard work is gonna pay off. These were just a few of Nintendo's more entertaining legal battles over the years. Which one was the most interesting to you? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.